week of relaxation, a weekend of adventure, or an afternoon of fun on the water, you'll find what you're looking for on the Lynx Lake Canoe Trail. Starting at the Tanina Lake Canoe Trailhead at mile 4.5 of the Nancy Lakes Parkway, the Lynx Lake Loop Canoe Trail is one of the best ways to experience the rolling, lake-studded landscape of Nancy Lake State Recreation Area. The roughly 8-mile loop trail travels across 14 placid lakes, with marked portage sites and boarded trails chaining the lakes together. The portages can be a bit of a bear, but this trail can be done by almost anyone with the right equipment and a little know-how. So let's get to it. Your first and most important piece of gear is your life jacket. You don't paddle without it. These lakes may be as calm as they come, but accidents are always unexpected. Cold water has the potential to incapacitate you, making self-rescue or helping others impossible. So if you don't want to wear an uncomfortable life jacket, get an awesome one. Whether you're taking a canoe or a kayak, going for a day or loading up for a weekend, try to pack light. Your boat will be carrying the load most of the way, but you'll have to carry everything, including your boat, over the portages. So take a craft you'll be comfortable hauling up hills. Make sure you have mosquito repellent and sunscreen in your backpacking loadout. There are food lockers at all the campgrounds, so you probably won't need a bear barrel. But if you like to carry bear mace, this is a place to carry it. There's a daily fee for parking at the trailhead, unless you have your annual park pass, like a true Alaskan. Cell phone service is spotty across the lakes, so consider bringing a backup if you can. And always let someone know where you're going and when you'll return. Our plan is to take our time and explore the whole loop, starting at Tanina Lake. We'll be stopping at James Lake and Lynx Lake along the way. So let's get on the water. Before you get underway, balance and secure your load. You don't want weight shifting around unexpectedly. Passengers too, seat yourself low and center. Be sure to take your time and get comfortable with your boat. We'll be going around the loop counterclockwise, heading south from the boat launch and towards the first and longest portage between Tanina and Little No Luck Lakes. This portage is nearly a kilometer long, with Milo Pond breaking it up into two stages. We decided to get it out of the way first, but if you're planning on hauling in firewood or a cooler, you might want to take the clockwise route. Between Little and Big No Luck Lakes, there's a lakeside tent camping site with bear lockers, fire rings, and an outhouse. The portage between Big No Luck Lake and Chicken Lake is only a tenth of a mile, but goes over a pretty steep hill. At Chicken Lake, we attracted the attention of this resident beaver, who checked us out from the water. After another short float and another short portage, we made it to James Lake in our first destination. The James Lake Public Use Cabin is one of four public use cabins on the Lynx Lake Trail that can be reserved online at alaskastateparks.org. The cabins are a comfortable and cozy way to tour the lakes at your own pace. The next morning, we awoke under a heavy fog that blanketed the lakes with a haunting light. If you really want to understand the rhythm of these lakes, be sure to take your time and soak it all in. Moments like this are why we're here. By mid-morning, the sun had burned off a bit of the fog, giving us enough visibility to push off. Spirits were high as we made our way across James Lake. Our goal for the day was to reach our next cabin on Lynx Lake, drop off our packs, and explore the Little Susitna Connector Trail. Between James and Owl Lake, there's a shallow slough that might be passable at times, but not for us. If you're not wearing tall boots, you might want to just bother with the porch. The fog kept lifting as we made our way across to the next portage, and by the time we'd reached Char Lake, we were seeing blue skies again. There's another tent camping area along the shore of Lynx Lake, with all the usual amenities. Lynx Lake is the largest of the lakes on the canoe trail, so expect a bit more traffic. Motorboats and float planes aren't a rare sight, and there are numerous private inholdings on the lake shore, so do respect private property. Oh, sorry, I think I frightened the birds. Lynx Lake is also the location of three public use cabins. Lynx Lake number one has a view of Denali and Mount Four Acre across the lake and sleeps a maximum of four. Lynx Lake cabins number two and three are newer and have quite a bit more space. By the time we dropped off our packs, the weather was perfect for our trip down to the Little Sioux Connector Trail. 
The 4.3-mile connector trail links the Lynx Lake Loop with the Little Sioux. Whew. Following a portage on the southern tip of Lynx Lake, you'll start traveling through the Echo Ponds. The ponds are connected by sloughs down through Candlestick Lake, and they're a great place to explore without all the portaging. After a flat tenth of a mile across, you'll be on Buckley Lake. The connector trails aren't as well traveled and can be a bit rougher, but the views are definitely worth the effort. After navigating this narrow slough, you'll reach the portage to the Little Sioux, which is only a half mile away. If you start from the Little Sioux Canoe Launch in Houston, you can take a four to five hour float trip to the portage to Skeetna Lake and the rest of the canoe trail. But we'd had our fill of portaging for the day and we started the float back to our cabin. By the time we got back, the sun was getting low and we were ready to relax. The best part about watching a sunset by the lake is you get two sunsets. The next morning, we were back out on Lynx Lake, headed north to Little Fraser Lake and the last leg of our loop. The portage between Fraser Lakes connects to the Cross Park Trail, which isn't often used, but gives foot access through the middle of the park. This wide, gently curving slough connects Fraser Lake to Jackknife Lake without the bother of a portage. The portage between Jackknife and Ardaw Lake has some pretty steep areas and passes our third backcountry camping site. After Ardaw, it's just one more portage past another backcountry campsite to the last lake on our loop, Milo Lake. Once you're across Milo Lake, it's just one more short portage over to Tanina Lake and the beginning of the trail. Thanks for paddling along. If you're looking for more trip ideas or you just want to show off where you've been, hashtag AK State Parks for all your tagging needs. And hey, if you're here already, why not follow us while you're at it? Regardless of your experience level, consider taking a paddling course where you can practice reboarding in a safe environment. Check alaskaboatingsafety.org for more information. <laughs>